world begins. 130 lunatics take off into the desert to see who will be the fastest to think. started in the second batch of riders is literally flying and by the 80 kilometer mark he has passed the first four starters and is leading the race. But now the desert begins to play its part. Phil's bike is rapidly losing power. The dust is wreaking havoc with his exhaust system. the break he needs. He streaks into the lead, leaving the old firm to eat his dust. But Phil, an experienced bush mechanic, used to handling the fickle nature of the desert, is not ready to give up this race. At the 110 kilometre mark, Jeff Curtis comes to grief. He's misjudged a jump and injured his neck. great deal of pain, but he's determined to stay in this race. Maxine Carr, running at the rear of the field, also runs into trouble. Because she's unfamiliar with the track, she misses her first fuel stop. There is no choice but to turn back before she runs out of fuel completely. Peter State is determined that his misfortune at the grid draw won't be the end of him. He is riding like a man possessed. Stephen Gall, like the true professional he is, puts his head down and just rides, as fast and as smooth as he knows how, and he knows how. is only 30 seconds behind one of the main threats to the old firm. With his fuel crew operating at lightning speed, Gaul screams off to catch him before they get to feet. Moments later, Jeff Curtis pulls in. Time out. Oh, your neck? 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 Oh, what happened, mate? Right? Oh, I just leapt over that, that big hill near Deep Well there. And the old neck just went click. <laughs> Having a 
endured the race for 200 kilometers, Maxine Carr has yet another mishap. Just 30 kilometers away, riders begin to arrive at Fink, one way or another. That 30 kilometers may as well be a thousand for Maxine. With a broken clutch and her bike still tangled around a bush, it could be all over for Fink's only female entrant. Those riders who've actually made it to Fink are still only halfway. Very sore on the arms, making a terrible amount of paste, as you can see. You get so dry in the mouth, you know, it really sort of builds up around your lips and you can't get any moisture. So much air circulating in your helmet. I can't swallow probably or more my throat's a bit swollen from the dust. I just about spewed a couple of times in the helmet. <laughs> what I got here. And then, against all odds, Maxine rides into Fink. I need a drink. will be number one at 9.02.22. Late in the afternoon, the corrected times are posted. With Jeff Curtis out of the race, the old firm is in trouble. They watch in sober silence to see what time they will leave Fink in the morning. Stephen Gall is two minutes behind the leader. Phil Lovett is two minutes 20. Seventh position is bicycle number 10. Peter State is seven minutes behind. And the leader, a newcomer, American Jim Ellis, is leaving first at 9 a.m. I mean, I wouldn't mind winning it for the first time ever for a rookie. That is spoil Damien's race, but it would spoil yours for winning it before. So mine, what? The fourth time. This would be the fourth time you win it? Yeah. Yeah. The speeds we're going, four minutes probably gives you a, maybe two kilometers lead. So unless Jimmy has a problem, there's no way that I'll catch him. I still got a chance. I'm not that far beyond. I give me best shot tomorrow. I don't know what happened. It's just not there. Not in the running. I think uh, it's going to be a bit of a challenge for everybody. <laughs> Jim Ellis waits nervously for the 9am start, but he's not as worried as the old firm. For them, it could be the end of an era. Never before has a first-time entrant won the Fink Desert race. Jim knows he might be making history today. The moment of truth finally arrives. of his life. He wants to claim this race as a first-timer. Stephen Gall, two minutes behind, is fighting a losing battle to catch the American when fate gives him the luckiest break. The desert says no to Jim Ellis. What happened? Broke the cylinder. Stephen Gall 
is now running in first place. The old firm are back in control. Everything was going well, I was having a good run. And then all of a sudden on my right hand side, Jimmy Ellis parked beside the track. My first thoughts was, wow, this is great. So I was extremely happy to be able to uh, cruise by Jimmy and, and get into the first place. Phil Lovett streaks into second place and with renewed vigour sets out to catch Gore. There's only desert races where I can ride any good um, against the likes of Stephen Gore and um, Glenn Bell, the likes of those guys. I can match it with them there um, because that's what I do best. I just enjoy motorbike riding. I don't really want to do it professionally. Peter State moves into sixth place and while his chance of catching the leaders is slim, he won't give up. The hardest part of the lot is the concentration. Because if you don't concentrate, you know, you could die. I mean, I find myself not concentrating sometimes and you have to shout at yourself or just talk to yourself and say, come on, you know, kill, you know, just really get yourself into gear. Maxine Carr is running in 86th place. She is one tough competitor. Yeah, I'm glad the bike hung in there, I really am. All I had to do was hang on to it, <laughs> it did the rest. I was riding the fastest that I've ever ridden. It was good, I, I amazed myself actually. I, I really didn't think I had that much guts. I just wanted to make it back. I wanted to finish the Pink Desert race. When I got to the last couple of straights, I was really happy. That was, that was a great, I could see that being careful from now on in, I was there for sure. Crossing the finishing line, I was, I was really elated. I was extremely happy because that's uh, one of the first big wins I've had for a little while. And it really boosted my confidence, you know, and I was really happy. Actually, I had a bit of a tear to my eye as I, as I crossed there, so I was really, really pleased that I did that. I've always liked to be a winner over the years. I've strived very, very hard to achieve success, and I, I don't like losing. I'm knackered. <laughs> well done, mate. Thank you. I, see oh, you yeah, nice much. I did sigh a bit of relief when you saw me. Saw you. Oh, I bet you did. <laughs> and finally, at the end of the day, Maxine comes home in 74th place. Whew. That was a hard one, that one. <laughs> I've got a very slim chance of ever winning the race again. I think anyone that doesn't ride professionally has a very slim chance because the money's too good now. Um, although it doesn't really matter to me. I mean, I've won the race twice, so um, I'm part of it, you know? Oh, well, I just go over and party and have a good time and then if I don't win, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I'd like to go out with one more. Phil's got three, I've got three. Now Stephen's got two and uh, Peter's got two. We've kept it in the same club. Let's hope we can keep it in the family for in the future. <laughs> but if Jimmy Ellis comes back, it could be hard. <laughs> Thank you very much. Next, we go to a uniquely Australian game that's all the